there were some rumblings of this throughout the week, but that Intel had made the commitment to uh, build its next sort of super leading edge fab in uh, Ohio. Um, so that was some really big news. It's, uh, I believe it's a uh, hundred billion dollar mega fab is what they're saying. It'd be the world's largest chip plant is what, uh, what Gelsinger said. I mean, obviously, Pat, let's just talk about this in, in the big picture. Over the last two years, we've heard endlessly uh, about the supply chain shortage. Um, now, this was not strictly a shortage based upon uh failed supply chain efforts and endeavors and management and offshoring. It also had to do with unprecedented demand that was brought on by a combination of COVID and web, uh, you know, web evolution, cloud computing, uh, futuristic vehicles that are all using more and more semiconductors. And so we say semiconductors will eat the world. This is a true story. We did not make it up. Uh, the, the growth is real. The, the PCs are still mo humming. Mobile phones are humming. Automobiles, but everything that needs chips. We saw issues on the leading and the lagging edge, and so that was one storyline. Um, we also saw this shortage could arguably be caused by the fact that we moved about thirty from about thirty-seven percent of chip production here in the United States to around twelve percent. Um, as that number came to fruition, we realized that maybe we had a little bit of problem that we moved too much offshore too fast. So as Everyone from the Biden administration to leaders in the semiconductor space around the world were sort of evaluating the circumstances and the situation. Everyone said repatriation is going to be the key. TSM is building fabs in Arizona, as is Intel. You've got <clears throat> Samsung uh, building fabs, Pat, right outside our, our beautiful hometown here in Austin. Uh, and now Intel is going to continue to up the ante. It's going to spend more money and build more fabs in Ohio, which is very interesting. You know, a job creator a um, you know a hopeful improvement of resiliency in the supply chain, a big investment and in expense, uh, desire to compete. You know, Intel's been a bit under fire as it's done a little bit more uh, work with Fabless, but also you know people questioning uh, its next technology. Will it be able to catch up on process with TSM and all of the Fabless, Qualcomm, AMD, uh, you know even Tesla and Apple, all of which building on uh, Fabless. Um, and so there's a lot of statistics and numbers coming together here, but I think Intel has been very committed. It's IDF strategy, it's foundry strategy, it's IDM strategy, being a, a company that's not only designing, but also manufacturing full, full stack has been very important to Intel and has been very important to Pat's narrative coming into market. So, you know, I, I, I will say my immediate take is interesting destination. Uh, want to see all the details from a standpoint of what sort of tax breaks, benefits, what what was the final selection. Uh, it seems interesting that Ohio was the final selection, but it's also good to see it distributed across the U.S. because much of it has been here in the South and the Southwest, Pat, but it's good news for America. Wow. Daniel. Oh, no, like two minutes. Solid like two minutes. No, solid ending. Good for America. No, that, that that's exciting. Listen, um, two fabs, both in Ohio, $20 billion, big investment. I grew up in Ohio, Daniel, and the region was decimated by a loss of jobs in the 70s and 80s, automotive, steel, overall manufacturing, heck, tires, right? Uh, believe it or not, uh, a little bit over 100 years ago, Ohio used to be the tech epicenter of the United States. Um, sorry, not uh, 100 years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 100 years ago. Um, when it, uh, Wright Brothers, Thomas Edison, uh, heart transplants, uh, believe it or not, ball bearings was a, uh, was, was a huge um, mechanical. NCR. NCR, uh, my first employer in Ohio, spawned uh, Thomas Watson. Uh, in fact, the word firing comes from when Thomas Watson left NCR. They pushed his desk out the window and set it on fire for all the employees to see what happens to employees that leave NCR. Um, but that's a long time ago. And now it is one of the fentanyl capitals of the world. Uh, heroin addiction uh, is, is, is high. But back to the show. Uh, I left there in 1995 and, and never uh, looked back. Why? No tech jobs. I mean, the weather sucked, uh, but no tech jobs. Um, <laughs> My biggest question here, Daniel, is how you don't just go and build a factory, okay? This is not building a factory for uh, the pillow guy, okay? This requires a very high propensity of PhDs. 
It takes uh, about 500 very unique suppliers that are going to have to set up shop there. The reason that people uh, uh, re-up in Fabs in Arizona and New York uh, and Austin is, is because – uh, all that stuff is set up. The ecosystem is there. There is not an ecosystem in in Ohio uh, for this. So, I really want to see this. <clears throat> maybe, just maybe. But you know, the last uh, time I did a one on one with uh, Pat Gelsinger, he was in Washington D.C., and I'm hearing Pat is spending a lot of time there. It would be interesting uh, if if you look at Ohio is typically a pivot state for the presidency. Uh, and it goes back and forth between uh, red and blue. And the fact that Pat Gelsinger is going to go up to Washington, D.C. and do a victory lap, probably with the uh, Commerce Secretary, uh, and maybe even uh, Biden shows up, it's probably going to look good for the presidency uh, uh, as well. So maybe uh, choosing Ohio had something to do with the politics and getting money from the U.S. government. I don't know. Is that just too conspiracy theory, Daniel? No, I mean, mm. I think the fact of the matter is, is you can't simply tell everybody it's a conspiracy theory when it's not what you want to hear. I think people tend to be pretty, pretty thoughtful about politics and where they're placing and creating jobs and where you get the most political support. Uh, Arizona is a swing state, right? Ohio is a swing state. You see states like that oftentimes being looked at for large investments because there's a little bit of a gain. And let's face it, we're always trying to make gains, whatever that is. So uh, right now there's dollars to be had as part of that semiconductor uh, plan. I think it was like $52 billion, <laughs> the grand scheme of things. Uh, that's large and yet amazingly small for the trillions of dollars we're spending and the fact that we're so dependent on this technology. But um, it's good to see investment being made. It's good to see Intel continuing to make investments um, right now, like I said, as the economy is sort of in a bit of a swirl with interest rates, inflation, uh, you know, Pat, not to go on a little bit of a diatribe, but I'll just go down this path a little bit. Oh, well, I, I, and I want to rebound on, on just one thing I want to add at the end. Yeah, that's great. Just I'll just say this, you know, I know we don't this isn't a politics and ec economic show, but I do love this stuff. And obviously I write and talk on a lot of channels that do talk about that. But interest rate hikes are terrible for most Americans. And I think. While a lot of people are sort of celebrating, trying to bring inflation down, bringing down prices of houses and cars and groceries, yes, you need that. The benefit of raising rates, uh, compressing values of companies and increasing people's mortgage payments, because trust me, if you raise a mortgage payment by one or 2%, even if the house went down five or 10% in value to do that, the payments are gonna be bigger. And so same thing on car loans going up, credit card loans going up, student loans going up. These are not things that wealthy people worry about. These are things that, middle class and average uh, earners are going to be to be struck by and the prices aren't going to come down that much and wages won't go up that much, especially if the businesses and their stock prices and their values are getting crushed by these uh, hawkish actions by the Fed. So this isn't a magic bullet and not getting Build Back Better passed, uh, no more stimulus, no more free checks. I mean, we are in a bit, uh, you know, so these are things like this fab though, Pat, coming full circle are the real shovel ready kind of things that are going to create jobs and are going to keep the economy moving so well it's not like ready to sh i mean maybe some shovel no no no. i, I was laughing uh remember you know, obama, yeah obama did his big shovel ready and like 20 percent of those projects actually happen in real life yeah that's um, it's never good so you know i talked about the lack of experience in ohio and chip maker chip making uh let me read ohio governor mike dewine's quote Intel's new facilities will be transformative for our state, creating thousands of good paying jobs in Ohio manufacturing, strategically vital semiconductors, often called chips. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's like, it's like, it's like, it's like we in Ohio don't have any idea what semiconductors are. So I have to call them chips. Anyways, I, I, I was noticing that. Um, and it's an exclamation point on, on just how disconnected Ohio is from semiconductors and puts an exclamation point on how much work Intel is going to have to do to, to make it a, a leading edge uh, facility.